The headlines, IDC workers picket office after dismissals, two people shot, one fatally, and Barbados Tridents meet fans ahead of CPL Open. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, June the 18th, 2015. Officers of the National Union of Public Workers have joined staff of the Investment and Development Corporation, the IDC, in a picket of the agency's offices on the Princess Alice Highway. They did so for about an hour in the morning to protest the sending home on Wednesday of 13 workers who had reached the age of 60. The picketers accused the IDC of age discrimination. The NUPW's Delcia Burke said the protest action was intended to bring awareness to the workers' plight. The union has written a letter to the IDC management demanding they reconsider the termination letters by noon on Friday. We have two shootings to report. One involved a 21-year-old man who was shot dead overnight near his home at Godding Road, Station Hill. Police said Dion Andre Howard received a gunshot injury to his torso around 11 o'clock. He was taken to the QEH by a private motor vehicle and underwent emergency surgery, but he succumbed to his injury and died in the early hours of the morning. The second shooting was of the owner of a Christchurch bar, the Monster Grills, Elvis Graham, who has undergone surgery. He was shot in the wee hours of the morning as he closed the bar, which is located near the Garfield Sobers roundabout at the Sergeant's Village Wonderville Junction on the ABC Highway. It is unclear how many shots Mr. Graham received, but reports indicate that one of the bullets remains lodged in his leg. Two abandoned properties on Cheapside are causing concern because of the eyesores they have become. One is opposite post office headquarters. It no longer has a roof with water settling in places on the floor and running out onto the street. On the opposite side is a garbage-infested building which once housed Murrow's In-N-Out restaurant. It is not known who owns the two properties. Barbadians have already snapped up $45 million in government savings bonds, but former Prime Minister Owen Arthur says they should have been warned that the bonds are not investment grade, meaning they are in the so-called junk status following the country's downgrade, though Mr. Arthur said he did not like that term. Internationally, credit ratings for non-investment bonds are considered to be low credit quality. Our savings bonds are guaranteed by the government. During his contribution to the budget debate on Wednesday night, Mr. Arthur said Barbados's credit rating is below investment grade and authorities, including the central bank, have a duty to caution investors. The independent member of parliament said, however, that he was not against the bonds in principle since local commercial bank savings rates are now among the lowest in the world. European Ambassador Mikhail Balford wants Caribbean governments to work harder towards achieving green economies. Addressing a climate change expo on Wednesday, Mr. Balford said global warming can be stopped if the right steps are taken. The expo formed part of celebrations for Climate Diplomacy Day. School children were among those who turned out to view exhibits promoting a healthy environment. In sport, Barbados Pride, the name of our first-class cricket team, have picked players from the Leeward and Windward Islands for the two compulsory slots reserved for non-nationals in the Caribbean Professional Cricket League draft. They are 23-year-old St. Croix-born Hayden Walsh Jr., who is the son of a former Antiguan batsman, and 19-year-old Grenadian Preston Maxween, who has played no first-class cricket. The draft was held again this year at the Accra Beach Hotel. All the draft picks are available on nationnews.com. Meanwhile, members of the public had a chance to meet some of the Barbados Tridents, the 2020 team, ahead of Saturday's Caribbean Premier League opening match. The players greeted fans and posed for several pictures at courts in Bridgetown. And finally, a German man recorded himself 
cutting shared possessions, including a TV, an iPhone, and a car, in half after a breakup and posted the halved items on eBay. The man who posted the video to YouTube under the name Der Julie splitting, uh, wrote in a company in text he was splitting his possessions in half after a breakup. Thank you for 12 beautiful years, Laura. The text in the video reads in German, you've really earned half. The Julie then proceeds to cut through items including an iPhone, chairs, a flat screen TV, a bed, a car, and even a teddy bear. Oh dear. Greetings to my successor, he wrote in the video's description. And that's Nation News for Thursday. For more, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember to pick up your Weekend Nation on Friday or subscribe to our e-paper.